Hello, everybody out in Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District. It's your Congressman Jamie Raskin coming at you this Friday for my favorite time of the week, Local Hero, when we get to recognize the people who make life in our community so wonderful and so extraordinary. You're going to love uh, our Local Hero this week, Manuel Vera. He's 73 years old. He retired from Pepco seven years ago. He was born in Lima, Peru. He lives in... Um, Silver Spring uh, with his wife. He has two daughters. He's got a granddaughter now. Um, and um, he uh, is a retiree who donates bikes all across Montgomery County, all across the world. He fixes bikes. He started turning wrenches on bikes when he was in his 30s by fixing his own bikes and family and friend bikes. Um, and in the middle of the COVID-19 lockdown, when you'll recall Local Hero got started, he began to offer free bike tune-up services to his neighbors, and he continues to do that. And he's donated more than 450 bikes in our community. And then he gets bikes that people donate to him, use bikes. He fixes them up, and he gives them away to people in need, either in MoCo or to other people in the larger community um, who are refugees from Afghanistan or from Central America, from places in Africa, people who need bikes. So he is a total uh, active environmentalist who's making uh, our area much more bike friendly and much more uh, bike focused <laughs> rather than a uh, car focused. And he donates his great skill and his great labor. And uh, for all these reasons, Manuel, you are our local hero this week. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so tell me how this whole thing got started. And um, you've only been fixing bikes since you were in your 30s. It's not like you started when you were a teenager or anything. No, no. And I have no formal training in uh, being a, a bike mechanic. I just kind of grew with it. Um, I was bi fixing bikes occasionally over the next last few decades. But uh, most recently, um, once we got uh, into the COVID pandemic and there was no place to go, um, I asked um, my neighbors to bring me their bikes for a free tune-up. So that's kind of it, uh, how I started this whole thing. Uh, I wouldn't call it a project. I hesitate that because uh, creating a project requires some discipline and uh, <laughs> some black day and so on. This kind of grew like a weed. You know, it just branched off into different things. Well, but what gave you the confidence to think that you could fix people's bikes? I mean, are you pretty handy with mechanical stuff or... No, not really. Uh, I spend a lot of time scratching my head, staring at a, at a bike and trying to figure out what the problem is. But eventually, yes, I will get it. I had I have to tell you that I learned a lot. Uh, most of what I know in the last three years or so about fixing bikes, there are very few things that I, I can't do. And when, when that happens, then yes, I'll get help from somebody else. All right, Andrew, and are you riding bikes yourself? I am, yes. I enjoy riding bikes with my wife. We recently bought a couple of electric bikes, so that's keeping us going for a while so when you're out on the road riding a bike do you ever pass people whose bikes you gave them or you fixed up for them yes uh, occasionally i you know I'd make a habit of stopping if somebody <laughs> looks like they're stranded and they just they, they wonder what to do one time uh, my youngest daughter which was probably in uh, middle school or elementary school we were both riding in rockway park and uh, i stopped this guy had his bicycle upside down and he was looking at it and, and uh, I, I offered help. And then uh, he told me what the problem was. His chain had come loose and he was trying to get it back on and he couldn't do it. So my daughter chimes in and says, my dad can fix anything. So <laughs> any problem with the bike. So that's, uh, that was a good endorsement at, a, at an early age. That's an awesome endorsement from your own daughter. Man. That, that's incredible. So well, how did it go from you're kind of helping your neighbors to becoming like a broader thing where people are talking about it and hundreds of people are bringing you their bikes because they're sure. just putting a bike like it's in their garage. Like, oh, we haven't used this one in a few years. We'll bring it to Manuel. Well, I thought about that. I just, I, one night I was just lying in bed. I've been fixing bikes for neighbors, you know, for about a year or so, so far. And, um, then I'm thinking, uh, I, I couldn't sleep. I'm looking at the ceiling, looking at the ceiling fan going around and around. And I'm thinking, you know, there's gotta be a ton of bikes out there that are sitting in people's basements. Either the children have outgrown them, people have uh, bought new bikes and didn't know what to do with the old ones. So they, the bikes sit there for 
months, even years, like collecting dust in the uh, in the basement, is in, in storage sheds, and so on. So I decided to put out word requesting bikes uh, from my neighbors. Just started small, and sure enough, uh, people brought me bikes, and um, then I tried to figure out how to distribute them to to folks. And this is about nine, uh, 2020 or so, yeah, 2020. And um, I uh, started going uh, to a local church, for example. I, I stood out in the in a parking lot, uh, waiting for people to come out, and then I would offer bikes, and uh, they would pick up all six bikes. They would be gone. So then um, I decided to go cast a wider net in the community. In addition to my own neighborhood listserv, I got other folks in the community to use their own neighborhood listservs to um, collect bikes for me or, or donate bikes. And also I have a, a few supporters in the community who are collecting bikes on my behalf and then they contact me when they have a couple for me to pick up. So um, basically that's how I, I've been doing it. I go through social media quite a bit, uh, soliciting bikes, not only bikes, but also used helmets, pumps, as well as um, uh, any tools or bags, anything that might be needed for, for a bike. So, so since you and, retired from Pepco, this has been your major thing. Like. If I dropped by your house during any particular weekday or weekend, you'd probably be working on the bike. Not while I was working. Not, not while I was working. It's This has only been happening for the last maybe three years or so with the, at the level that I'm doing it now. Before right. then, it was it was an occasional fix here and there. Right. But now, but now it's like your major retirement oh, yes. activity. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sitting here in my shop and... Um, I, I can spend hours in, in one day uh, fixing bikes. I could, and, you know, if I don't run into any problems, I can probably do three or four bikes in one day, which is pretty slow by bike shop standards. I, uh -huh. I don't think I would be a successful bike mechanic in a bike shop. For me, it's more about the the journey, just yeah. uh, looking at that bike and figuring out the problem, turning the wrenches and savoring the moment, and then I go on to the next bike. So I was able to collect enough bikes that I could stand in a street corner in so near downtown Silver Spring. It was a sweet spot. It was um, next to a park across from a food pantry uh, next to about two or three moderate income apartment buildings. And I would stand up in the street corner, line up all these nine or 10 bikes, and I put up this sign that says three bikes. And sure enough, within minutes, every, about 30 minutes or so, every bike would be gone. Um, that fast. People would pull over uh, in, in their cars, they would uh, stop if they're pedestrians, and then they would ask, you know, what is this all about? Do I need to fill out a form? Do I have to pay you? <laughs> no, the answer is no. This, if you want this bike, it's yours to take. And that was, uh, you know, some of the most happy moments. I still distribute bikes in that manner. Um, I, well, wait, I and how do you find refugees, like from like Afghan refugees? Yes, I've been working with uh, a several, um, a handful of uh, nonprofits, um, charitable organizations. One is the International Rescue Committee. Another one is Homes Not Borders and uh, several others who refer me, uh, refer to me um, requests for, for bicycles. And they work directly with refugees trying to working with relocating them, getting them a, an apartment, furnishing the apartment, getting school supplies signing up for social security, signing up, or trying to look for a job, all those things. I oftentimes get requests to for that additional kind of help. And uh, my answer is, yeah, I'll help to the extent that I can with these other things. They want computers and so on. Uh, and I'll tell them, no, I'm, I'm just a bike dude. And all, all I do is bikes. So, but, but there are plenty <laughs> of other organizations and people who are much better prepared to provide that additional help. Do, do you have any apprentices? Do you take like high school kids who come and learn from you? No, sir. Um, no, I have no no training at all in, in uh, being a bike mechanic. I, <laughs> I, I I used to work on my uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. Uh, some years ago, before it it, it went away, but um, other well, than that, you are uh, a hero to amateurs all over the world. You are a hero to people who love bikes all over the world. You're a hero to people who want to make meaning out of their retirement. Uh, and you're Thank a hero you. to all of us in Maryland's 8th Congressional District, Manuel. You are the bike dude and you're our local hero. And 
Thank you for what you do for our community. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you very much.